the question we're answering today is is it really worth getting a 600 millimeter f4 for your wildlife photography so today we're here at king charles pond blackmore copse wiltshire here in the uk and we've brought along the 600 millimeters and unbelievably we're going to use it for dragonflies so even if you're not interested in the review of the 600 millimeter you may be interested in the dragonfly footage and video we get the broad chasers have been going like mad we've had darters and we've had another dragonfly that i haven't even identified yet amazing so uh, keep watching so of course we're going to address the elephant in the room which of course is the cost of a 600 millimeter lens they are phenomenally expensive and then we're going to go through the specs of the 600 millimeter then i'm going to show what it's done for camilla and i's photography uh, what it's done for us and then finally i'll tie it all together with a summary of why i think you should get a 600 millimeter f4 So you can't afford one, hey? Well, you're watching Camilla and I. And, uh, well, photography equipment is not cheap. And I would suggest if you look in your kit bag, don't tell your partner, but I reckon you've probably got five to six thousand pounds worth of equipment in your bag right now. So yes, it's a stretch to get a, even a second hand 600 F4. I mean, you're looking at least five to six thousand pounds for a second hand one the sony version that i've got you'd be lucky to pick one up for less than 10 grand at the moment so yeah we can't afford the mortgage we can't afford the rent but also we can't afford the fags or the booze so uh, yeah it is a sacrifice uh, a definite sacrifice to get a 600 millimeter and uh, it's your hard-earned cash so is it really worth you getting one Keep watching. So let's face it, the big bad boy is going to cost you a lot of money, about the same as a small car. So what do you get for your money? Well, you get one very expensive bit of glass and uh, it weighs about three kilograms and this is class leading. So uh, this is one of the light ones. I mean, some 600s weigh nearly four kilos. So uh, yeah, quite a lump. You've got to consider, can you carry around such a piece of glass as this? Just the sheer physical use of it alone. As you know, on Camilla and I, if you watch us regularly, we use a trolley, which does tend to offset that particular problem. You also get an enormous front element which generally doesn't take filters, although I have seen a UV one for about £500 recently, case filters I believe. But uh, you can't realistically put filters on the front of this lens. There's a 40.5mm slot in the back which uh, can take a polarizer. Of course the obvious thing is the 600mm reach, 12 times your standard 50mm absolutely superb amount of reach and you've got the f4 which is extremely good so the next thing you get with a big lens like this usually you get some top range features because usually it's top of the range lens and obviously carries certain features and indeed this one's no different we have got I'll just rip back the protective cover a bit because you can't reoperate that with the cover on a switch for autofocus and manual focus we have a full-time direct manual focus button which i always leave on this overrides the autofocus at any stage then of course we have the focus limiter and we have a um, full range an infinity to 15 meters or the other way around and we have a 10 meter uh, a 4.5 meter to 15 millimeter 
range and that limits the uh, focus setting. Today, as you can see, possibly there, I've been using it in the middle setting 4.5 meters to 15 meters to capture these dragonflies. Then we have a preset function which um, we can also set for this lens, absolutely brilliant. So we can, if we know a dragonfly is going to a particular perch, we can pre-focus in on the perch and select the set button and then we can immediately go back to that dragonfly in an instant just by pressing a button on the lens further down. Absolutely brilliant. A great feature and uh, that's what I mean these top lenses you get top features. Optical steady shot of course and uh, obviously it has uh, three different parameters one two for panning and three for erratic movements so the standard sort of uh, probably on any lens nowadays and we also have a locking ring so you also have this very heavy foot which comes with the lens so you can mount it on your favorite tripod head all in all superb features which is what you'd expect in a top line lens such as this for the small cost of a car. Yeah so that's the boring bit out of the way. What's this lens actually going to do for your wildlife photography? Well hopefully you've been admiring some of the footage out of the 600mm and the Sony A1 of the dragonflies today here at King Charles Pond. They are absolutely in pristine condition. They must have uh, recently emerged. But they are uh, beautiful, awkward to focus on, erratic and uh, yeah, fun to photograph. So if you're used to shooting at 600 millimeters, but at f5.6 or f6.3 with the Sony 200 to 600 millimeter, for example, then you're in for an absolute treat using a 600 millimeter f4. It is absolutely incredible. It's not just the low light capabilities that f4 gives you, gives you. As I mentioned earlier, it's the depth of field. You do get a very shallow isolating depth of field with this lens. So if you're using a zoom lens which goes to uh, 600 millimeters, great. But I would suggest that 90% of the shots that you take with your zoom are at 600 millimeters. So this is the focal range we really need and indeed that's what I found that most of my shots if you look up on your computer and go and if you can analyze what lens and camera body combination you used you can do this in Lightroom. I think you'll find that you most of your shots taken with the zoom lens are at its maximum range and uh, this is what I found and that's why I purchased a 600mm f4 because I realized that most of my shots were actually taken at the 600mm length so it was an essential lens to get and that's why I got this one over the 400mm f2.8. So here in the UK we shoot wildlife which is largely far off. I mean you can get close using a hide, a blind, completely stealthy. You can get close to your subjects. You can get close to these dragonflies, no problem at all. I've got the uh, 70 to 200 millimeter with me and I'll get some great shots with that. Ooh, linked to some footage and a shot with that already with the polarizing filter. So uh, yeah, it's not like it's the only lens you can use, but it does help. So when you're going for reach, it really does help to have the correct reach. The 70 to 200 will take teleconverters, as uh, many of you may know. You can easily take the 1.4 teleconverter and the 2 times teleconverter with the 70 to 200. That was what they were originally designed for. But they also work extremely well with the 600 millimeter. The 600 millimeter becomes an 840 millimeter f5.6 and a 2 times teleconverter makes it a 1200 millimeter 
f8 lens absolutely phenomenal for reach of course as if you've watched previous programs you can't always use that amount of reach but it's a consideration and it's an option you have with a 600 millimeter whereas a zoom lens as i was saying in my long reach video you can't really get much more than a 840 f9 with the sony 200 to 600 millimeter if you get the two times converter it really the aperture goes to f11 and it's really too far to be of any real use in our wildlife photography you can but it's um it's a stretch whereas teleconverters are taken beautifully with this lens so we're still getting great light through to the sensor even if we max out at 1200 millimeter f8 it's still very usable other factors come into play which render it very difficult to use but otherwise it's still optically extremely good now another reason 600 millimeter f4 is particularly good is because of the bokeh the bokeh is to die for open wide open at f4 you get a circular bokeh linked to some circular bokeh hopefully i got some today um of a dragonfly probably a broad chaser because there's a lot of broad chasers around and it just shows marvelous bokeh and uh, that's why you pay the big bucks you don't get with the bigger elements you get the better better bokeh and obviously the depth of field but uh, bokeh to die for mm. so f4 oh, i could talk all day about f4 f4 as opposed to f5.6 or 6.3 normally on a zoom lens to 600 millimeters is oh amazing the isolation of the subject is incredible and uh, yeah that's why we always try and get in position we scout an area out with the 200 to 600 millimeter lens and then we work out the best positions and move in for the kill with the 600 millimeter lens because it is so good and we just get such isolation of the subject that's why Camilla and I pay the big bucks an awful lot of it is just purely for the isolation of the subject amazing you can isolate the subject if you're uh, if you're able to get your subject in the open um, in a, an exposed spot in a predominantly it's perfectly possible but this makes isolation of the subject easier obviously shooting at f4 is also very critical on Camaro and I because wildlife subjects we don't usually come out in the middle of the day that's why we're filming this it's usually far too bright for photography and we like to come out first thing in the morning or last thing in the evening and get that golden light and in order to get that golden light and a reasonable ISO f4 is amazing and of course the quality of this lens wide open whereas often you could stop down with a zoom lens to get that really good quality you don't have to do it with a dedicated 600 millimeter because it is so good at f4 well i certainly haven't got the monopoly on 600 millimeters anybody else who's got a 600 millimeter and uh, you can think of anything else that why you own a 600 millimeter if you put it in the comments below as well please so that uh, people can uh, read the comments and see what the 600 millimeter does for you because it's not just what it does for Camilla and I uh, there are a lot of five and 600 millimeters out there and that's a point actually before I owned this big bad boy I had the Sigma oh we've got some mating going on sorry back in a sec yeah sorry about that the other thing I would mention is 600 millimeters rather than 500 millimeter especially if you're into birds um, birds are a lot smaller and that extra 100 millimeters makes all the difference the 500 millimeter sigma i had 
didn't quite cut the mustard. I often had the 1.4 teleconverter on, which took it to an f5.6 700 millimeter, and it wasn't still wasn't really getting me the reach sometimes, which you need. So uh, yeah, if you can, 600 f4 I recommend, especially if you're into your birds. So to sum up, the Sony 600 millimeter is an extremely expensive lens, and uh, is it worth the money? Is it worthwhile owning a 600 millimeter? Well, to hire one is going to cost you 400 pounds or so just for a weekend. So uh, if you start using one on a regular basis, it's soon going to cost you 10,000 pounds in higher fees alone. But still, well worth hiring one and seeing what it's like. We're doing that with a camper van to uh, a yeah, later video coming camper van Camilla and I to see if it's worth it we're hiring one to see if it's got any benefit to us so uh, Wex photography for example do do hire of a big lens so it's well worth taking out a big bad boy for the weekend and seeing for yourself if it actually improves your photography and indeed whether you can handle such a big lens which is a consideration without a doubt. So although it's an enormous initial cost for such a lens, I mean this is a phenomenal cost, say £10,000 for the Sony second hand, I think it's 12000 new at the moment, and um, <clears throat> this is a lot of money. But you also have to bear in mind, unlike the camera bodies, which basically go out of style or get updated, the actual lens lasts a lot longer. And I know some people have sold their 600 millimeters for as much or not much less than they actually paid for them recently. So uh, in some respects, a 600 millimeter can actually be an investment. How, whether that will continue to be the case in the future, who knows? We don't give investment advice on Camilla and I, but um, we do enjoy owning the 600 millimeter. So as you know if you follow Camilla and I regularly we use the 600 millimeter an awful lot. We get an awful lot of value out of it. We suss out the location and then we move in for the kill with the big lens and uh, yeah we get some beautiful results. Make no bones about it. I mean uh, whether we're going to win anything hmm, that's in the lap of the gods and the entries for the uh, British Wildlife Photographic Association are in for this year from Camilla and I. 25 of my finest shots, uh, which I'll run through after the competition is closed. But are we going to win? Well, probably not. But all I can say is I think it was 100% of the shots that I submitted for the British Wildlife Photographic Awards this year were, drum roll please, this combination. I don't think I even put any other photos in. I kept clicking, as a box comes up automatically when you enter the British Wildlife Photographic Awards, a box comes up and says, um, what combination of camera did you take it with? And if you use the combination before, it will repeat that combination. And I don't think I clicked any other combination in 25 shots taken with this element. So not saying they're going to win, um, but they're taken with the best equipment. So they've got the best chance. Technically they're superb. Whether the shots will win, another matter. But uh, yeah, can't complain about the equipment used. This is our best combination by far. Absolutely superb. And that's why we appreciate it on Camilla and I and that's why I'm selling it to you today um, because it is the ultimate lens it's the most expensive lens in the Sony lineup it's an incredible lens it's an incredible investment any 600 millimeter is an incredible lens it's usually the top of the range top of the price top specifications top optics it is absolutely beautiful and that's why we use it on Camilla and I. So uh, yeah, um, 600 millimeters. So uh, is it worthwhile? Well, 
it's definitely worthwhile to Camilla and I. But is it worthwhile to you? I mean, it depends on your circumstances and how seriously you take your wildlife photography and what lengths you're going to go and what sacrifices you're going to make just for photography. It is, uh, it is quite a sacrifice. I mean, it's not cheap. We are insured on Camilla and I. I think it's ever, ever sure. Camera insurance, £350 a year, covers us for £30,000 worth of camera equipment while we're out. So, uh, yeah. But we're out a lot with this combination. And this combination alone is £20,000 worth of equipment we're using today here. Just photographing a few dragonflies. So, uh, yeah, it's worth it to us. But is it worth it to you? You've got to weigh all these factors up. So, uh, anyway, waffled on for long enough. We love the 600mm on Camilla and I. Have a good one. Bye. From Camilla, the expensive lens, and me. Bye for now.